Hey there. So, about two weeks ago, I built myself a new computer. Yay! And the motherboard that I went with was the uh, Asus Maximus 6 Hero. And one of the reasons I chose that motherboard was because of the Supreme Effects uh, audio on the, the motherboard, which, according to them, is superior to, uh, like, stock or standard Realtek uh, audio that comes with most motherboards. Turns out that this is basically just a Realtek uh, chip like any other motherboard except that they use some different components or something. And also turns out that this uh, audio uh, happens to be a complete nightmare. So here's the deal. I built the computer, put Windows 7 on it, booted it up, started installing drivers. Everything was hunky-dory until I installed the audio drivers. The first thing that I noticed was that the volume was extremely loud, and I mean extremely loud. I had to put the overall volume here uh, all the way down to 1, and then it was kind of bearable, but it was way too loud. So compared to like the, the volume with the default Windows drivers, it was insane. So that was the first thing. The second thing, and more annoying, was that every time a sound would start, there would be a noticeable pop before the sound and after the sound. So instead of hearing just this, so just a ding, I would hear pop, ding, pop. And when I started looking around for a solution or a fix or whatnot, uh, I tried different drivers, I tried all kinds of things. I searched forums, I found like a 60 page thread uh, from people having the same problem with all kinds of so solutions that, uh, that I tried, like changing stuff in the BIOS, like I said, different drivers and whatnot. Uh, but nothing fixed it for me. So basically I just uh, gave up, uninstalled the driver and went with the uh, default Windows driver which does not have the uh, popping uh, bug. So and I just went with that for like uh, two weeks until yesterday when I installed uh, Jack which is this over here. Well that, that is Jack control. So uh, for those not familiar with Jack I've been using it for like mm, about a year maybe a year and a half and I use it for music production. And until yesterday, I hadn't installed it yet because I didn't have the need for it yet. So, but yesterday I installed it. And at the same time, I thought like, uh, let's go back to the uh, that audio bug and let's try the Realtek uh, drivers again. And the bug was still there. But once I started up Jack and had it running, the bug disappeared. There were no more pops. Now, for those not familiar with the bug or have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, well, this video is probably not for you, but just in case. So what I did was, uh, let's go back here. What I did was I lowered the volume over here to like one. So I set this to one. Then I set the stereo mix as my recording uh, device, as my default recording device. I opened up the sound manager, uh, the sound recorder this one over here and I recorded what I could hear and then I imported that into Adobe Audition and increased the volume over here of the whole sound uh, the whole wave file I increased the volume by 45 decibels and I did the same thing with Jack disabled and jack running, so jack enabled. So what you see here, this wave file is jack disabled, so this has the pop sound with every sound that I play. So and this is what it sounds like. But just note that when I play this, this might be loud for you, because I increased the volume quite a bit. And you may also have noticed there are some aliens in the background. But that's to be expected because I increased uh, the volume so much. But 
as you can see this is the ding sound it starts with a plop there's like this peak over here and then when the sound ends there's this clearly visible annoying thing there and it does that every time a sound starts or ends now with jack running so that's this wave file I did the same thing I'll play this for you and notice the difference hopefully As you can hear, the aliens are still there, but now I just hear a ding and there is no plopping whatsoever, except uh, the beginning of the recording, but that's uh, the start of the, the sound recorder. For some reason there's a, a plop there, uh, but at least now the annoying pops during the uh, ding, so before and after the ding sound, they are gone completely. Now you may wonder why that is, and so was I, but I'm guessing, like, uh, Jack Audio is a audio server, it runs in the background, so once you start it, there is this uh, audio server running in the background that you can use with certain software uh, called DAWs, D-A-Ws, uh, and I'm actually using it over here in Adobe Audition. Uh, let me quickly show you that. Going to... Uh, over here so I'm using an uh, Osio driver and it's the device is Jack router so that's the uh, audio server that I'm uh, using in Adobe Audition so if I go here and check the connections I see Adobe Audition here which is set to output to my system speakers so and that's that's what I use Jack for. The thing is, you can run Jack without ever using it. So without doing music production or without using Adobe Edition, it just runs in the background as a service. And that actually, uh, by doing that, you fix the audio bug. So there will be no popping. You'll simply have a service running in the background that like, constantly uses your uh, audio device without really using it. It just keeps it busy so it doesn't disconnect because the pops, that's where the pops come from. They come from uh, disconnecting and connecting something. So in case you have this bug and you tried about everything you can think of and you can't get rid of it, this might be the solution for you. Until Asus or Realtek or Microsoft or whoever uh, actually really fixes the bug. So let's look into installing, configuring and running Jack. First thing to do is of course download Jack. You can get it from jackaudio.org. Go to the download page. Scroll down to Windows, Jack 2 installer and grab the uh, either 32 or 64 bit. In my case I have the 64 bit version. Uh, so it, it is actually a mixed. So it, it has both 64 and 32 bit. So download that install it and once it is installed you go to your in your start menu uh, you start up jack control if you let me see if I can quickly find that page without pausing the video uh, I think it's here somewhere give me a sec so uh, how do I use Jack on Windows? If you happen to be on that page, they, what they explain here is pretty much incorrect. So the installation is fine, but how to run Jack is, is not correct. Don't, so don't follow that. Just follow what I do. <laughs> so basically, go into your Jack and install, instead of starting Jack Port Audio or the Jack Net Driver, start Jack Control. This will open up this window. Then click on setup. That brings up this window over here. Uh, can pretty much leave everything at default. Only thing you do need to do is set this to Jack D, then add a space, then add a dash, and then a capital S. 
that's an uppercase S. Don't make it lowercase. Uh, they have a different meaning. Then over here at the driver, select port audio. Leave this at default. Set the frame spirit to like 128 or 256, something like that. S set the correct sample rate. Everything else can pretty much be left at default. I also select it for audio. I select it playback only instead of uh, duplex. I think the default is duplex, but that means both your input and output will be used by Jack. But if you're not really using Jack, there's no point in selecting your input. So set this to playback only and leave this at default, the output device. That means that uh, Jack will pick up the uh, default um, output device from Windows. So if you have set it to the speakers, it will uh, use that. And if you have set it to your headphones, it will use that and so on. So, so that's pretty much it. Uh, most important is this over here. It needs that parameter, the dash capital S, and you need to set it to port audio. Once you have that, you can uh, close this or click on save, close this, and then I'll stop it for now. Then click on the play button. And it says here starting and then it should say started. Once Jack is running, you're pretty much there. You can now check if you still hear any pops when, for instance, clicking this, there should be no pops at all. Now the thing is, um, when I used this on my previous computer, I only had Jack running whenever I needed it. So whenever I was doing some music production, so when I was just using Windows for anything else like gaming or whatever, I never had Jack running. But because of this bug, you pretty much need this running the whole time. In other words, Jack needs to run as soon as Windows starts up. And the easiest way to do that is to use the task scheduler to uh, make sure that Jack runs as soon as you log on or the computer starts up. But before we get into that, there's a few more things that you need to do. So click on setup again, then click on miscellaneous. So start Jack audio server on application startup, enable that. This will automatically start the Jack audio server without you having to click the play button every time you start the Jack control. Then stop Jack audio server on application exit. Enable that as well. I have disabled the confirm application close and confirm server shutdown. I have disabled that. Then enable system tray icon. Enable that and then start minimize to system tray. So when we then create a task and we boot up a, the computer, uh, Jack will start running and it will start running minimized in the system tray. So you will only see an icon here in the system tray. Once you have all these options configured, you can close this and now we go into the task scheduler and do a search. Task scheduler, open it up. There we go. Select the library. There will already be or most likely there will be a few entries there and we're going to create a new one. As you can see, I already have one. I already created one, but go ahead and create a new one. You can start either with a basic task or a new task. Let's start with new task. Give it a name. I'm going to call it Jack Temp because I'll be deleting it afterwards. So give it a proper name, give it a description if you want, then run only when user is logged on. Yes. Then you can keep the user as is. So that will probably default to the currently logged in user. Then run with highest priorities. Yes, please. Then configure for, uh, depending on your system. So if you're on Vista, select Vista. If you're on 7, probably select 7. If you're on Windows 8, you probably have a, another entry here. But I'm going to select Windows 7. Then triggers. I'm going to create a new one. Then begin the task. And you have the option to select at logon or at startup. I tried at startup, but I have a f uh, I ran into a problem with that and it wouldn't run. And I'm guessing it is running before the actually the actual audio 
uh, devices are available so it's uh, it won't run so select at logon then any user you can select any user or specific user i chose any user because i have multiple users on uh, on this computer then make sure it's enabled and another thing to do is delay the task as i just said when i first tried this i ran into a problem that jack would start too soon before the audio devices were available so what i did then was give it a slight delay not 30 seconds but just five seconds so select 30 seconds and then change it to five and that will work and click on ok go to actions add a new action and actions should say start a program and we're gonna browse to where we have installed jack so in my case c program files etc jack and you look for uh, what's it called again q jack ctl select that click on open you don't need to fill any uh, additional arguments or start in you don't really need that if you really want to you can set the start in to the folder that jack is in so c program files slash jack no quotes then click on ok conditions start the task only if the computer is idle no start the task only if the no so we want this running at all times then settings allow task to be run on demand uh, you can leave that enabled so you can actually test it in a second then stop the task if it runs no we want it running all the time then if the running task does not end when the requested force it to stop enable that if the task is not scheduled to run again delete it no okay yeah uh, select this as well do not start a new instance when the task is already running or when Jack is already running then click on OK you now have a new task um, just need to stop Jack for a second and actually completely exit it so we can test this so if you then right click on your new task and select run an icon should be visible in the system tray when you click on it it should open Jack control and it should say that it has started so the only thing left to do now is to test this out by rebooting your computer and to see if uh, jack starts up properly and of course if the uh, pops the annoying pop bug is actually gone so this pretty much worked for me it fixes the bug uh, and i think it's a nice solution jack doesn't use that many resources when running in the background um, and all we can do now is uh, wait and hope that uh, either Asus or Realtek fixes the problem by releasing a decent driver. But until then, uh, this pretty much worked for me. And I hope it does for you too. Uh, in case you do have problems with getting Jack to run properly or configuring it or whatnot, uh, feel free to contact me, leave a comment or send me a, like, a private message and uh, we can start a Skype session and I can run you through the whole process if needed. But for now you can stop cursing at Asus, uh, enjoy your pop-free sound and until next time.